The Internet of Everything, or Internet of Things, or various other words for it, um, but I like the Internet of Everything because it, it sort of describes the concept particularly well. It's the idea of everything becoming part of the Internet, and by that I mean up to this point it's been um, information that's been linked, it's been data services and people through sort of social profiles and so on. And now the idea is that the physical world will also become part of the internet and part of the web. So it will literally be a combination of any physical object, any person, any bit of information or any data driven service will all become part of the web and the internet. When the original Internet of Things was uh, conceived of in the 90s, there wasn't the social web, there wasn't web services available from Amazon and other cloud providers, there wasn't you know, a huge range of incredibly cheap sensors and chips and widely available technologies to come up with connected products on, on uh, Kickstarter and so on. So it really is now a, a mainstream possibility in a way that it wasn't before. The technology that's really uh, catalyzed it is probably the smartphone in the sense that um, if you look at the technology in a smartphone, it is actually a collection of different sensors, you know, accelerometer and GPS and so on. And uh, all of the, the, the connectivity that comes with a smartphone and the web interface means that a lot of the technology that you would have to fit into a, an object in order to connect that to the internet, now everybody's carrying around in their pockets. So suddenly, what defines the internet of things can actually range from a fully connected product like a Nest thermostat or uh, some industrial application and actually range all the way through to everyday objects that you can connect with using image recognition or scanning of tags like NFC and so on. So for me the smartphone is probably the single most important piece of Internet of Things technology that actually makes it mainstream today. Well, you have kind of you know, um, wearable technologies and Nike fuel bands and so on that, that are about much more everyday consumer interaction. So it spans that whole range. And I think probably for consumers, wearables are one of the first most obvious areas where you'll start to see more mainstream penetration. But I think some of the things that we're really interested in and the brands we're working with is about taking everyday objects from bottles of whiskey to chocolate bars to anything that you could see in the, in the shelf of a supermarket or in, a, in the home and actually having those start to connect and have digital sort of superpowers if you like. Real potential for the Internet of Things is the data, is the fact that all of these interactions, regardless of whether they're consumer facing or they're back-end logistics and sort of tracking based, they're all generating a huge amount of data about the minutiae of those physical objects being interacted with or being um, uh, tracked at various points of their life cycle, literally from perhaps how they're made and the materials they use to the point that they actually get recycled into a next generation of products. And all of that data, how you manage that, what you do with that, from a marketing point of view, the intelligence and insight you extract from it and how you reapply that intelligently to stimulate repeat purchase and loyalty, how you use it for R&D, for reduced costs, for more efficient you know, supply chain production and logistics. That is actually the fundamental challenge. So the Internet of Things is at heart about, it's, in that sense it's a big data problem. But you can only do that if you make an easy, compelling way for consumers to interact with objects that they get value from.